Well, here we are. It's another Saturday morning. You know what that means? Time for another edition of the Cummins Real Estate Group Show with local rock star realtor Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Curtis. Are you feeling the fall weather? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still wearing shorts. Good for you. I'm one of those West Coast guys that like tries to wear shorts as long as I possibly can. I'm the total opposite. <laughs> Give me my sweater and long pants as soon as, and my boots. As soon as the weather comes. You're breaking out the flannel. Yep. Looking absolutely. all stylish. <laughs> yeah. Some some apple cider, all that fun stuff. I waited. I was very patient and waited until the first day of fall, until Thursday afternoon to have my first fall drink. Coffee. Was was it a pumpkin spice latte? No, actually. Oh. I didn't go that route. I went with a slightly different route. Wow. Yeah. And it was delicious. <laughs> it was hot as well. Because I've been having iced coffees mostly during the summer, but you know it's fall. Now you gotta have a hot coffee. So I had it. Make that change. Yeah. Oh, maybe you had the, it wasn't a Christmas coffee, was it? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't go that, I wasn't that brave. Although, I did have Northern Lights put up my Christmas lights this last week. Already? I know. Well, they said they can do it early and they're not charging me anymore, so I said, have Adder. <sighs> <laughs> what do you got Richard around for if you can't put up your Christmas lights? Uh, men should not go on ladders, okay? Don't go on <laughs> roof and don't go on ladders unless you're co- in contracting like Stuart, our guest here today. That's right. <laughs> and even that, I question some people going on ladders anyway. So <laughs> I've fallen off a few ladders in my time. See, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Stay off the ladders. But I fall better than most people. I roll with them and I, you know, I'm, I'm good. You drop, roll, wait, what is it? That's for fire. That's, that's for stop, fire. Drop, stop, and roll, drop, that's and roll. Fire. <laughs> Well, there's not usually a lot of stopping when I'm falling off a ladder until I hit the bottom, and then there's still some rolling and trying to bounce back. Or when you're on fire. Or when you're on fire, yes. <laughs> so, did you have a fall coffee yet? No, I have not, because again, I, I, I try to like make summer last as long as possible. I mean, we're still playing softball. We got a game Monday night, our last game, then the like, year-end tournament's coming up this weekend. So, to me, it's not fall yet until baseball's done. Are you going to get, talking about baseball, are you going to get your real estate license so you can play in our tournament <laughs> next year? It seems like a lot of work just to come to play on your team. Like, <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> isn't there some way I can be, like, an employee for you for a day? Like, you know, yeah. when what they about sign. on weekends? You can help me with open houses? <laughs> there we go. Houses? Well, you sign somebody to a one-day contract and they're eligible to do things. Like, can't we do that? Like, <laughs> you just have to chase off one bear and you're good to go. That's right. <laughs> I could be your bear chaser away or person. Okay, so Stuart's talking about there is a bear got into my live Facebook walkthrough video this last week showcasing a property and mission that I have off Keystone. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. And this bear was adorable and it didn't attack me. It just ran away. So it was all safe. Yeah. It was all good. It was just looking for a picnic basket, according to <laughs> cartoons, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mr. Ranger. Hey, boo-boo. Yeah. Oh, Yogi Bear. <laughs> Bring me back to my childhood. Oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, last week, not this last Thursday, but the Thursday before, I had the Sellers Seminar Zoom event, and it is up on my YouTube for everyone to go and view. If you didn't get to be there yourself, it is there, and on my, on my socials, you can check them out. Uh, Today, our first segment, we are going to talk about a couple pieces of news um, that I feel the public should know about uh, if they don't know already. And so the first one is actually that the government is talking about foreign buyers and not allowing them to purchase in Canada. And they think this is going to cool off or calm down or reduce pricing of of real estate. Um, Now, should foreign buyers be banned from buying in Canada? Do Well, good luck. There's always a way around. People will figure this out. People have already probably figured it out. They're just waiting for the government to say something so they can put their plan into action. Exactly. So you don't think it'll affect affordability? I am saying no. I'm being a bit pessimistic here. I know. But the government's always usually just a little behind on these things. And that's true. And like you said, like everyone figures things around things. Like when they bought the foreign buyer's tax up and they came back and bought with a vengeance after that, after they figured it out, and then they raised it again. So, uh, But there's affordability issues, um, and they're actually self-imposed because there's too much red tape, I believe. And Stuart, you can, you can pipe in on this one. And delays and costs to building new homes for people to live in. And the foreigners buying doesn't have the majority buying power right now. So how in the world would that help? I mean, bring off the red tape of, of for builders, for developers, and allow them to build more streamlined and quickly and more efficiently and more cost-effectively. 
It's truly, uh, that's definitely the case. And especially now with the step code and the way that things are actually increasing lately, um, it's becoming more and more difficult and more and more challenging to be able to pass certain inspections, um, especially with uh, regards to efficiencies and and green building. Um, But yeah, there's... Especially City of Vancouver, uh, any contractor that's had to do anything to do with permits uh, in the City of Vancouver, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, months, delays, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes clients try to uh, coerce you to do work without permits. Um, hopefully, hoping that you'll get the permit. <laughs> hopefully that you'll get the permit and stand strong. And uh, there's, I know a number of contractors who started work without it. They got busted, and then this the homeowner ends up with uh, their house ripped apart and they have to sit on it for three months, six months, something like that until the contractor can actually come back in once they've got the permits and everything. So, I've heard of that. Uh, yeah. One of Richard's friends had a roof that they were trying to do or something else and they were stuck with a tarp on their roof for a year yep. waiting for the permit because they got busted. Yep. Yeah, crazy. Like the, So how the... Like when developers purchase properties and contractors, like you're saying, you're you're trying to uh, budget, you're trying to give quotes, and how can you when the cost of everything is going up, the delays in the supply chain, if they fix that, that would fix a lot of affordability issues. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even within that, I know uh, a lot of folks, myself included, uh, our estimates and quotes are only valid for so, like very short pay, uh, periods and pockets of time now uh, because thing, uh, things are so, um, they, they, they change so quickly. On the rise. On the rise. And um, I mean, I myself, is, and I can tell you, I know others as well who have gotten burned on projects when we've kind of committed to something and it's just... You got to stick to your word and, you know, try to negotiate and communicate with the clients as as honestly and truthfully as possible. And uh, hopefully they're um, understanding to be able to increase uh, the cost on jobs. But, you know, sometimes you quote a job at 200000 and by the time you actually get to doing it, it's probably going to cost you 200000 let alone trying to make money on it. So, yeah, and it's, yeah. it hurts everyone all around. It hurts you and your business. Yep. And now, you know, we need people like you. And then for the homeowner who's trying to afford it, what do they do? They have to, they still have to do it or they, they cut back on what they want to do. So now people aren't purchasing as many things as they could. And then inflation, you think of inflation as well on top of everything. And so there's, there's, there's a, a lot with that so fix the supply chain that would be really good it's a great step in the right direction and fix the red tape obviously and the red tape that's the big part of it it always has been it's a bureaucracy right and it's just like nobody wants to you know move too fast (laughs) and if you don't move too fast you end up stumbling along the way exactly (laughs) okay the pending cooling off period for buyers is the next topic i wanted to talk about because this is huge so have you heard about the newly legislated cooling off period I, i have Okay, so have you? I have not. Okay, perfect. So I work uh, with a real estate agent quite closely on a week to week basis. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have heard about Becoming this. acutely aware about <laughs> yeah, this. That's now. right. <laughs> See, I said you just need your license now. Yeah. <laughs> you already that know one day doing. contract's in the mail. There we go. You already have the knowledge. So, some quick facts about this. So, first, what is the cooling off period? Well, also, it's being called home buyers rescinding period. So you know about the seven-day rescinding period that a buyer has for new home construction or pre-construction for pre-sales. You don't have to have any subjects. It doesn't matter. If you have a firm offer in place as a new construction buyer or pre-construction, you get seven days to change your mind, and that is what the government uh, has for new home construction. However, we've never had that on resale properties. I mean, I've never heard of that anywhere in this area. So they're talking about starting this January 1st, 2023 and the three day period is what they're they're going to do they're wanting to give three days to for a buyer to rescind it starts the day after the offer has been fully accepted and does not include saturdays sundays or statutory holidays Uh, buyers are subject to a fee though of 0.25 percent so 0.25 percent of the purchase price to exercise their right of rescission. So yes, they can rescind um, the offer within three days, but they will have to pay that penalty. So there's no option to waive, because I asked this question. There's no offer to waive this, because usually buyers, sellers, if they agree, eh, okay, we're not gonna allow that in the negotiations, you think that would be okay, but it doesn't matter. Sellers, buyers can't sign to an agreement to waive this. The three-day period stays. Uh, The rescission can be delivered by snail mail, 
fax or email. Uh, the email must be sent with a read receipt option. Keep that in mind. But texting is not a legal way of rescinding. So that is what they're talking about. Um, you can't you can't rescind by an emoji? <laughs> <laughs> or a gif? <laughs> That's right. What does this mean? It's an unhappy face. I, I think that means what? <laughs> I just it's love- the poop emoji. Does that mean they're rescinding? <laughs> the fact that fax is still accepted is pretty incredible in its own right. So. It truly is. Yeah. I, don't even ha- I don't have a fax anymore. Do nope. you? No. Nope. No. It goes right to our email here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, that's you try to fax us, it ends up as an email anyway. I had that option for a long time. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so the notice invoking the rescission is deemed to be received as soon as it's sent. Uh, the read receipt does not have to be returned by the seller, just initiated by the buyer side. Okay, another fact, the fee can be deducted from the deposit money held. The balance of the deposit automatically is returned to the buyer during the three-day period. No authorization from the seller is required. So... Now, right now, usually it's after subject removal is when you do, like, that's a typical real estate transaction in our area is you don't really give the deposit until 24 hours or so after or at time of full subject removal. But now I'd be telling my sellers we need a deposit at time of acceptance, at least to make sure this 0.25% of the purchase price is covered in case they do rescind because there might be issues, you know, what if they try to hold that back? We need money and trust now. So that's going to change that game of real estate as well, for my suggestion to my sellers at least. And I'm sure other realtors would do the same thing to protect their sellers. Like when my real estate agent came here and handed me a check for $50,000 a couple years ago? Oh, you had such a great realtor. You have such a great realtor. <laughs> that was nice. I wonder who it is. I mean, the money was gone real fast <laughs> buying the new house, but still. <laughs> it was a nice moment. It helps. Every little bit helps. It's so true. Uh, So, yeah, you wanted that. Um, And the last note is seller must provide a mailing address, fax number, or email address in the contract of purchase and sale to provide the notice to the seller. So that will also be added. So that's that's what we got on the the news front. All right. Well, we should probably take a quick break here. But if people want more information about uh, your listings and what you do as a realtor, where can they go? MichelleCummins.ca. We're back with more right after this. All right, we are back with segment number two of the Cummins Real Estate Group show with Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. Now, Michelle, I'm going to put you on the spot here because I know we've already had him talking, but you do those world-famous Michelle Cummins introductions, and I think it's about time for one of those. (laughs) Okay, well, this time I was actually going to be a little uh, not so, what did you call him? Huh? Big world world, world class? Uh, uh, I don't even know what I said, but <laughs> I know you always do these big, huge, world class introductions where you know you really build people up wonderfully. So I figured we'd have you do that. Aww. And this expectation is now set. So uh, yes. I'm excited so, for this. <laughs> Stuart. <laughs> yeah. That's just it. Michelle. That's all you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Stuart. The floor is yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Stuart. Windsor is here with us from Windsor Wolves, and he owns and runs a fantastic company, and you've heard him on the first segment, and I am going to let him tell us a little bit more about himself right now, but we met, uh, I was it uh, within the last year, yeah, yeah. and we met through some um, business associates, and we got talking, and then we visited, and then... We just, I got to know his business and how he runs things, and he really stood out to me. I know a lot of contractors, I know a lot of builders, but there was something about Stuart that really stood out, and he's got an amazing um, Google reviews, and I wanted to read a couple of them, and just quickly, just part of one, if you go on to his Google, you will see it, uh, but they were so excited when he came in, him and his team, they said he was professional, uh, high quality, responsiveness was great, and the value was wonderful. And they said that they had no complaints and no issues uh, when they had him do a major renovation on their condo. They were very, very happy with um, how he responded to questions. And so I, I always look up Google reviews. Of course, everyone should and probably does nowadays. But <laughs> so it, it's proven that Stuart is a, a man for the job. And right now, Stuart, can you please tell us a little bit more about yourself per- personally, maybe share a little bit? Uh, personally speaking, yeah. uh, sure. Um I've got uh, pretty large and ambitious dreams to be able to um, 
I'm building my life currently. So through uh, the two businesses that I'm running through Windsor Wolves, uh, to be able to give back to the community. Um, my partner's from Mexico, and we're really we're both really keen to be able to go and start building some sort of educational facilities down there to be able to help some of these smaller uh, villages in Mexico um, to help uh, empower the the youth there uh, to be able to break away from their kind of their current um, financial uh, standards and where they're at. Um, so a lot of what I'm doing now um, on the construction side of things as well as the business coaching side of things are really feeding down that path to be able to push me towards that. That's amazing. Now, how did you meet this partner? How did you decide to do this? What, what was in your heart, your call? Um, well, I met my partner. She was here. Uh, she's, uh, she was just here for um, like originally uh, kind of eight or nine months. Um, I met her in a Mexican restaurant and uh, I'm quite chatty. So I went and uh, we chatted up pretty good. And then I gave her my number. She ended up, you know, connecting with me and we it was kind of all history from there uh, but prior to that on the desire to give back uh, I had taught English in, Cam- in Cambodia for a while and to have and see that to have that experience it filled my heart and really changed the the entire trajectory of my life um, and I, I really have to thank that entire experience uh, for really correcting my path and, and pointing me in the direction that um, kind of leading with my heart with what I'm doing. So That is an amazing story. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Thank it you is. For you've been to Mexico too. You, you, you do fall in love with Mexico and, and the people there because the people are so friendly and, and great and, and, and I like it because I'm tall there, which is <laughs> yeah. weird. But uh, what I like, would love about Mexico is, is the people though and their, and their spirit and their personality. But at the same time, it's a bit, it can be a bit uh, almost depressing because there's, it's such a, a, a difference. You're either Filthy, stinking rich, or you're poor. Yep. There's no middle class there. Yeah. Very little, anyway. V- very little, yeah. And only in, in certain kind of cities. Mexico City and uh, Monterrey, which is uh, actually where my wife is from. Um, and uh, But exactly that. And But they are so warm. They're so welcoming. I mean, even from the first day that I met my, uh, my wife's family, they welcomed me in with hugs and open arms. And just, it, it was just incredible. And amazing food. Oh. I mean, <laughs> we can do a whole segment on that. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love Mexican food, and I I do love Mexico. You know, we can we can broadcast from Mexico this show at some oh, point. Uh, maybe vacation property or something where we broadcast from the vacation yes. property. I All love right, how you think? We'll work on that. <laughs> Part of our intention is to be buying properties down there as well. So you know, I I know a realtor that can help me out with buying properties in Mexico right now. So <laughs> uh, I've got great connections down there. There you go. <laughs> so, what does your business do? Uh, Yeah. So like I kind of mentioned before, uh, there's kind of two components to it. So one is the general contracting side of things. So we uh, work hand in hand with interior designers, architects and engineers to uh, perform residential renovations and commercial tenant improvements. Uh, We're also in the process of getting our new home builders license. Um, I was previously a project manager for a passive house builder. So my intention is to get back into that high efficiency game as well. Um, and then additionally to that, uh, I'm doing business coaching for small construction trades um, and really um, hyper focusing on the individuals I bring in are very values driven. Um, so respect, honesty and accountability are the, the three driving values of myself and the people that I would like to work with and bring in. Um, and then helping them with um, being able to manage their money, whether that's through job costing and how to price jobs. Um, time management uh, stuff. So understanding what jobs to take, what jobs not to take, how to actually make sure that they have time for their family and loved ones or whatever they want to do. Uh, Then lastly, just finding their ideal clients and um, making sure that they understand what separates them from their competition. Company culture is so important and you want people to, you want to work together for a long time, longevity. And it sounds like you definitely have that in spades. You know what you're doing there. So what separates besides what you've already mentioned, because a lot of that separates. Oh, and having a vision. You got to have a vision and you do. Oh, so good. Okay. So what separates you from your uh, competitors? Um, On the contracting side of thing, um, I make a point, uh, again, that honesty being a big thing. And I know um, some individuals have a difficult time with uh, when mistakes are made and being honest about it and taking accountability for it. But I'll be the first one to admit when I've made a mistake and work with the clients to uh, resolve anything that's kind of come up. Um, But then also really trying to uh, dial in what I'm good at and what I'm not good at 
and making sure that I'm only staying focused on things that I have strengths in or that my team has strengths in and then finding the appropriate people who are uh, able to fill in the gaps. You know what, that is so true because one of the Google reviews that I read said that something about the paint wasn't done right or something about the paint. Yeah. And they they asked you about it and instantly you said, I'll take care of it. And you got somebody in there and you repainted the whole thing and you didn't charge them one thing. You did, they, they didn't have to fight with you. I've had contractors in my Oregon coast, my beach house. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Hor horrible, like like major things they did wrong. And it was... they. It was horrible experience. So that was great. To hear. I, I know exactly which job that you're referring to there. And yeah, it was just one little kind of blemish of painter um, that the, the painter had made and kind of discussed it. And it was just like, nope, I'll take care of this. And yeah, we repainted the entire apartment. And um, it was just like they were blown away by uh, by doing that. And it just it it just setting a higher standard. That's what it I'm going sure for. Is. Yeah. Huge customer service, and it was amazing. That was great. Yeah. Um, okay, so then who would your ideal client be? Uh, so on the contracting side of things, um, I tend to connect with a lot of interior designers, and we share work back and forth a lot. Um, but um, the individuals themselves tend to be uh, generally professionals or entrepreneurs, people who have um, a general kind of means to add a lot of love and character to their properties and not people who are looking to just kind of skip through something and try to get something done and slap it together. Um, and then on the coaching side of things, um, generally uh, people are, they've got fewer than four employees. Um, they are, they're rocking around with not branded trucks. Um, they're probably working 14, 16 hours a day, um, probably going job to job. A lot of taking from Peter to pay Paul. Um, that those style of contractors and there's unfortunately a lot of them out there but which with just a few kind of tweaks and changes to what they're doing um, can really empower them and make a world of difference to to their life uh, for me in particular the coaching uh, fills my heart a lot more than the contracting um, because I know that I'm able to make such a significant difference in the lives of these individuals and their families around them and and kind of their their um, their network. So you've watched it and you've seen it. It's it's incredible. It's amazing. It's incredible. So do you coach only contractors and builders? Yes. Specifically. Uh, yeah. So I I'm only focused on construction trades. Um, oftentimes um, I'm trying to stay specifically on Red Seal trades. That's like plumbers, electricians, carpenters. But um, being a general contractor myself, I'm taking on general contractors, and I still have a few others that are not Red Seal, but um, just construction trades in general. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we're in the studio again, so this is wonderful to have. Our, you're our first guest back in the studio, right? That is true, yes. For three years or so. Uh, <laughs> really? Just about, yeah. Yes. Thank you for having me. This has been an incredible experience, and I appreciate being part of the uh, the team here. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And uh, I have a, and I'm going to end with a quote of the week that is, I chose it specifically, uh, you inspired this quote, uh, but before I end the show with a quote, I do want to mention all my open houses. I've got nine of them this weekend. You're going to name all nine of them? Nine. No, I'm actually not. Just go on my socials and you can see all the <laughs> open Your houses. Your one-day contract's coming that in one this day weekend. one-day contract is coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so our quote of the week, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Let that soak in. It's from Steve Prefontaine. I can't make fun of that. That was pretty close, that was I think. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. She practiced that a couple times before we got on air. <laughs> no, that's, that, that's a good one. I like that one. Okay. If people want more information or they need to see your listings, your open houses, all that stuff, where can they go? MichelleCummins.ca. And join us again next week when we will talk real estate in order to unlock your real estate potential on a show where real estate is maximized. Thanks for listening.